particularly thrilled to see all these uh, young minds uh, at our university today. Respect each other. Help each other in learning. Our, our students, our graduates coming from this university would be the best. It's not about equipping that student with the academic qualification, but also preparing them for the workplace. Hi, I'm Jennifer Bang Waiko, and on this episode of Uni TV, we visit the Department of Electrical and Communications Engineering. Here, we gain valuable insights into how the department pursues knowledge, truth, and excellence in a student focused academic environment. Let's speak with the head of department, Dr. Peter Kiss, to find out more about this dynamic engineering department. We have got uh, the Bachelor of Electrical Engineering program. In the final year, uh, we are separating it to two options. It's possible to uh, choose the power option and the communication option. There is also an opportunity to go on for uh, postgraduate studies. We are offering MPhil uh, courses in electrical engineering. And of course, possible to uh, go for PhD. Basically, I could say the power supply companies, some mine, mining companies and uh, the telecommunication companies, they need a lot of uh, engineers because, because of there are some uh, very big programs about the electrification of Papua New Guinea, about the uh, spreading of the mobile coverage. Taking part in this revolution, they need a lot of, of workforce. I hope that uh, this, will be, this would be very important for the students and it, it would have good opportunities for them to prepare for the real life with the best background. In the new uh, curriculum, but, uh, which is started just this year, has got some engineering ethics in the second year program. I hope that it would be uh, very useful for the students to understand the uh, difference between the, the ethical and unethical things. I'm here with Damien Sangen from the Electrical and Communications Engineering Department. Damien, could you please tell me a little bit about the workshops and the laboratories and how they support the department here? So in the classrooms, um, the students are with the lecturers. And in the uh, laboratories, they are with uh, uh, technical staff. We basically look after the laboratories. We have three uh, sections in the department. Power and control, uh, communications, and then the computing. Uh, Mr. Sangin, could you please tell me about the industry partners that you have here with the department and how the department benefits from these partnerships? Uh, what we do in the laboratory is basically in line with what they will uh, encounter when they go out to industries. Mm. Uh, currently, I can say that our graduates are absorbed everywhere uh, in uh, all the industries, uh, like um, PNG Power. PNG Power is one of the biggest that absorbs them. And we have NICTA. NICTA has been um, recently because all the uh, managers up there are ex students from here, so they equally take them on, but um, um, some in the food production areas, uh, and Nestle, uh, Coca-Cola, uh, many, I mean, also in the mining. Basically, I can say that uh, they are absorbed everywhere. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the Department of Electrical and Communications Engineering and how it improves the lives of Papua New Guineans we can see that the department is not only producing competent engineers, but socially responsible citizens for a prosperous Papua New Guinea. Until the next UNI TV episode, goodbye and God bless. <laughs>